This is a very different kind of Vauxhall Insignia Sports Tourer. In second generation form, this car gains a much more upmarket demeanour with greater class, refinement and sophistication. Handling's more agile too, thanks in large part to the considerable weight reductions this Mark II model can offer. Savings made all the more impressive, bearing in mind how much bigger this car is than its predecessor. Add in extremely competitive pricing, and there are all the ingredients for a rejuvenated product. If you'd written the estate car off as an outmoded product, now might be the time to give the modern take on the genre another chance. If so, there are a few better places to start than Vauxhall's much improved second generation Insignia Sports Tourer. There's a revised engine range, major styling changes, and even the promise of an SUV-inspired fashionable four-wheel drive country tourer variant. This model here at the top of the lineup. Many predicted that MPVs and SUVs would be the death of the estate car. Well, there's no doubt that they dragged it into an alleyway and roughed it up a bit, but they failed to finish the job, and the classic station wagon has come out fighting. With a smaller section of the market to compete over, the top estate products have got their acts together. They're now more keenly differentiated from the saloons and the hatchbacks that spawned them with sleeker styling and more innovative and practical load areas. Take this one for example. An enormous investment has been poured into making this second generation Insignia Sports Tourer almost unrecognisably better than its predecessor. Think of virtually any feature you might want in a premium model and the chances are that this Vauxhall offers it with classy packaging at a vast list price saving. Plus, a longer wheelbase this time around means uh, a substantially greater seats down carriage capacity and also a significant amount more space for rear seat occupants. And this car claims class leading levels of media connectivity too. It all sounds quite promising, doesn't it? Let's put this car to the test. So, you get in, what to expect? Well, certainly the fact that this second generation Insignia Sports Tourer is around 200 kilos lighter than its predecessor sounds promising. Press the starter button and the good news continues. This is a diesel variant, yet it lacks the tractor-like rumble that previous Insignia diesel models used to have. Plus, this Mark II model has a longer wheelbase and a wider track, and they are both things that ought to make this Vauxhall uh, feel rather more solid and stable. Time to try it. Cars like this one don't spend their lives on open country roads, but on endless motorway trips and snarled up suburban crawls. Dynamically, they should be designed to suit that remit in the way that this one really is. To some extent, it feels like the bigger car it's now become. Uh, the suspension floats you over broken services that would have troubled and impeded the previous model. As before, there is the option to further improve that with Vauxhall's flex ride driving modes and adaptive damping system. Now this not only tweaks steering feel, uh, throttle response and on the automatic models gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive, but it also automatically adapts the car's damping to suit road conditions, uh, cornering speed, vehicle movements and an individual's driving style. For comfort orientated motoring it allows you to switch to a tour setting while if you're pressing on you can select sport. If the Insignia variant you choose doesn't have that flex ride system fitted, uh, you won't miss its absence quite as much as perhaps you might have done in the previous version of this model. The underlying firmness that you got at urban speeds in the first generation Insignia Sports Tourer is missing here, while out on the open road when you're cornering at speed, there's less body roll than there was before and there's generally a much higher level of agility. Uh, taking the weight of a typical small family out of any car will do that for you. Having said all that though, uh, the sports element of this Vauxhall's title shouldn't be taken all that literally. Uh, it's not in any sense a car that you take out and drive just for the fun of it, but it is one that you'd be very happy to have chosen at the end of a, you know, one of those long days fighting against the clock to meet appointments with awkward clients who really don't care about the difficulties of grappling with Britain's congested motorway network. 
For that kind of use, it's pretty certain that you're going to want a diesel engine. Now, the tide of public opinion may be turning against black pump fuel power plants, but the company buyers who account for the vastly overwhelming majority of Insignia sales are still very much wedded to them. So that's what we've chosen to try right here. Uh, the 1.6 litre and the 2 litre power plants that are on offer now bear Turbo D badging, but uh, they're otherwise fundamentally the same as their counterparts in the previous generation model. That being the case, our consumer advice remains pretty much the same. Choose the Pokia version of the 1.6. That 136 PS variant is a model capable of reaching 62 mph in 10.1 seconds, en route to 132 miles an hour. That's the second and seven miles an hour quicker than the 110 PS version of the same model, which is about 10% cleaner and more frugal, but which doesn't have quite the same punch through the gears. A 2-litre Turbo D Insignia is a lot harder to recommend on account of efficiency figures which have slipped away from the class standard. Although with 400 Nm of torque on tap, the extra 80 Nm of pulling power that the 170 PS version offers over the top 1.6-litre model could be useful for towers and it'll be welcome for those whose lot in life is continued long-distance travel. 62 miles an hour from rest in this variant occupies 8.4 seconds on the way to 139 miles an hour. And if you want to improve on those figures, a bi-turbo uh, 210 PS version of this engine is also on offer. And that manages 62 miles an hour in 7.5 seconds en route to 144 mph. This top diesel variant is what we're trying here, and it only comes with four-wheel drive and the all-new eight-speed automatic gearbox that's been freshly developed for this second-generation Insignia. And it's an option with all the engines except the 1.6-litre diesels. If you want automatic transmission with one of those units, then you have to have the old six-speed auto box, which has been carried over from the previous model. Should you consider petrol power? Well, the development team behind this car evidently think that an increasing number of potential buyers will because they put a lot of work into making this part of the lineup more credible. Um, now, small capacity turbocharged engines that use unleaded are very much in vogue at present. Um, even in the D segment, Ford, for example, uses a three cylinder, one litre unit in base versions of the Mondeo Estate. Vauxhall hasn't gone quite that far here, but the General Motors engineers have delivered a completely new entry-level 1.5-litre power plant that certainly punches above its weight. It's offered with either 140 or 165 PS. The former unit's capable of rest to 62 in 9.6 seconds, en route to 129 miles an hour. Its Pokia counterpart is capable of improving those figures to 8.6 seconds and 135 miles an hour. Now, since the quicker car offers no significant penalty in terms of either purchase price or running cost efficiency, uh, the choice between the two variants is a fairly easy one for enlightened Insignia sports tour buyers who realise that their uh, our restrictive annual mileage really doesn't justify the price premium for diesel power. That only leaves the top 2-litre petrol engine. That's another completely redesigned powertrain, and it's one that Vauxhall is very keen to talk about, despite the fact that sales of this variant will be vanishingly small. That's because this 260 PS flagship turbo model showcases both of what are arguably the two most significant engineering developments introduced with this second-generation Insignia, uh, both of which we mentioned earlier. Now, one is that super-slick 8-speed automatic gear, box and the other is a sophisticated new intelligent all-wheel drive system which uses a state-of-the-art rear torque vectoring system. Here a clever twin clutch setup, the so-called twinster diff, can apply torque to one or both of the rear wheels independently. Uh, now when you're cornering quickly more torque is sent to the outside rear wheel and that improves traction and ensures that there's far more of a feeling of precision when you're turning in. Now that's ideal if, for example, one of your wheels happens to be slightly off the ground, as it might be if you were taking a fast, bumpy turn at speed. The flex ride driving mode system we mentioned earlier is standard on that top 2-litre petrol model and when it's set to tour it accentuates the benefits of a multi-link rear suspension design which is unique to this top model. At the other extreme, with everything set to sport, this setup promises to make this particular insignia a very rewarding car to drive indeed and it's certainly quick enough to match the premium German rivals. Uh, 62 miles an hour from rest takes 7.1 seconds en route to a top speed of 100 152 miles an hour.
Now that's a nice turn of speed to have, but it's not particularly relevant for typical buyers of this model. Uh, so let's finish by summarizing the key things that you need to know. This Insignia Sports Tora now easily matches class leading Passat and Mondeo estate models in terms of drive dynamics. And more importantly for likely customers, it's arguably even more refined at cruising speeds than those two rivals. Plus features like the optional Intellilux matrix headlamps and a range of camera driven safety systems I mean that there's pretty much all the sophistication you'll get from a German premium brand model in this segment too. As a result, uh, you not only like one of these, but you might even conceivably want one. Now for Vauxhall and this part of the market, that has to represent a big step forward. Let's finish with a few words on the Country Tourer variant we're trying here. Now as standard, it gets the Flex Ride driving mode system, and most customers will also want to specify this car with the sophisticated four-wheel drive setup we mentioned earlier. And uh, if you have that, you'll be able to maximize the limited off-road prowess that's made possible by a ride height increase of 20 millimeters over the standard Sports Tourer model. Engine choices between two two-liter diesel units, with most likely to select the 170 PS engine that can be ordered with either automatic transmission or four-wheel drive, although unfortunately not both. This top 210 PS by turbo derivative can be had with both those things though, and it's a satisfying combination. You might not previously have perceived the idea of running a mid-sized Vauxhall estate car as being in any way aspirational. Well, perhaps you need to think again. This one might still campaign in much the same market segment as its predecessor, but it's moved up a class in almost any way you care to name, most particularly in style and size. Now that style element comes from elegant shaping, which was originally showcased by this company's Monza concept car. That was first exhibited at Frankfurt back in 2013. As for size, well, the Griffin brand claims in every way to have pushed the limits of what constitutes a D-Sector model. Uh, now, true, the second generation Insignia Sports Tourer isn't very much longer than its predecessor, but it is quite a lot wider and it has a wheelbase which is considerably lengthened by 92 millimetres. At the front, this Mark II model's more confident demeanour stemmed from this long, graceful bonnet which sweeps down into an upright, slightly inverted grille featuring these smart chromed wing sections. They flow from the central Griffin badge out towards these slim headlights that feature an LED version of the wing signature styling graphic that first debuted uh, with the original Insignia. Now, these lamps can optionally be ordered in this sophisticated Intellilux form and in this guise they feature 32 segments that work over a 400 meter range with an exceptionally bright and constantly adapting beam that never dazzles other road users. In profile, perhaps the most eye-catching feature is what designer Mark Adams calls the sweep spear, this sculptural blade-like lower swage line that starts behind the front wheel arch and then further back flows dramatically up towards the rear door handle. Here we've opted to test the country tourer body style, which features these extended dark anthracite wheel arches and side sill extensions, uh, which both attempt to emphasize this particular variant's 20 millimeter increase in ride height. Uh, now across the sports tourer lineup, 17 inch wheels are standard at the foot of the range, while 18 inch rims like these ones are either optional optional or standard, that depends on the variant you choose. Move to the rear and you get a raked tailgate, uh, which is embellished by these smart LED rear lamp clusters. Uh, the rear wiper could be more sleekly incorporated, but otherwise there's a clean, decluttered look that accentuates the impact of this central chromed Griffin badge. Okay, enough with the aesthetics. This is a state car and you're going to want to know just how practical it's going to be for your family needs. So let's take a look at that now. Now this optional powered tailgate uh, can be set to the exact height of your garage ceiling and it rises to reveal 560 litres of carriage space. Now that is nothing like as much as you'll get in rival Volkswagen Passat or Skoda Octavia models, but it is a competitive figure by the standards of the mid-sized estate segment. Uh, what else? Uh, well, we're surprised that the boot floor flexes so much. Uh, perhaps that's because there's a relatively empty space beneath it, thanks to Vauxhall's refusal to supply this car as standard with a space saver spare wheel. There is a cargo area 12 watt socket and you get the usual hooks and tie down points, plus there's a useful netted area on the right hand side there. 
If you want to carry longer items but you still need to take rear seat passengers, then this 40-20-40 split rear bench will be a boon, allowing you to easily push through lengthier items like skis. Um, dropping the rear bench, that can be done easily using these uh, switches on either side of the cargo area walls, um, a process that frees up to uh, 1,665 litres of fresh air should you need it. Time to take a seat up front where there is an enormous improvement over what was served up by the previous version of this car. Inevitably, premium rivals still have the edge when it comes to cabin ambiance, but the gap has been closed considerably, not only because fit and finish is so much better, but also because the development team have incorporated a few of the design tricks that make top German brand rivals feel more driver orientated. Now one instance of that lies in the way that the uh, console between the seats has been raised and the driving position lowered by three centimeters. The result being a cockpit orientated feel makes it feel more part of the car. Now another example is found in the way that when you move your gaze from the top of the central dash area down, you'll find the buttons for the infotainment system, the climate control setup, and those for various customer options displayed in various uh, separate zones, three separate zones in fact, which means it's easy to find them and operate them without taking your eyes off the road. Specify the optional head-up display that we've been trying here and you don't really need to look at the instrument binnacle either. Although that would be a pity because it's actually very smartly configured. For insignia models that uh, feature navigation like this one, this central part of the dial pack is taken up with a colour screen which is either 4.2 inches or as in this case 8 inches in size. Either way, it can show two selectable layouts. Sport shows a virtual speedo dial, while Touring delivers a digital MPH readout. Either way, you can tailor the display via info, audio, phone and nav options, depending on what you want to see. Anything the instrument binnacle can't tell you will almost certainly be found on this Center Dash IntelliLink infotainment monitor. Uh, that's a touch screen that certainly doesn't follow the iPad stuck on the fascia design approach, which is currently favored by some of the premium German brands. Um, on the contrary, this is beautifully integrated into the dash, even to the point of incorporating this little ledge along its lower frame so that you have somewhere to rest your fingers in between stabs and at this display, which now features a smartphone style pinch and swipe functionality. Um, on an Insignia model like this one that features navigation, this monitor is eight inches in size, and as you'd expect, it's compatible with the latest Apple CarPlay and Android Auto phone connectivity systems, and that's activated via this projection screen option. Um, more familiar infotainment inclusions run to the usual Bluetooth, DAB stereo, and informational features. Talking of media connectivity, we also want to cover the other key piece of standard technology which is available with this car, the OnStar Personal Connectivity and Service Assistant. And now, if you're not familiar with OnStar, uh, let's tell you that it provides SOS automatic crash response, stolen vehicle assistance, and via a smartphone app, various vehicle diagnostic features too, uh, allowing you to do things like remotely lock or unlock the doors, check your oil life, or sound the horn or flash the lights if you've lost this Vauxhall in a busy car park. Via this roof-mounted blue OnStar button, you can also contact an operator 24-7 who can help you if you're lost, download journey directions straight into the car's navigation system, or summon assistance if you're stranded. Uh, for the first three months of ownership, OnStar will also create, in this insignia, uh, a 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot, which boosts your phone signal and which can function with up to seven devices, so there'll be no arguing in the back. You'll have to pay for this feature after that though. Plus, the package includes a vehicle tracking device which can automatically disable the car if someone steals it and then pinpoint its location. Should such a theft take place, you simply contact OnStar using a downloadable MyVoxel smartphone app, which if necessary, you can also use to access important vehicle data and remotely lock or unlock the car. 
Enough with connectivity. What else do you need to know about this cabin? Well, for one thing, you no longer feel you're in an Astra with ideas above its station. Now, true, quite a lot of the hardware has been carried over from the latest version of that car, but it's been incorporated into a facial layout that, as we suggested earlier, now feels wholly appropriate to the more exalted D segment. Now, we've talked about the way that the ergonomics help with this and material quality plays its part here too. Slick stitching uh, distinguishes the grippy three-spoke steering wheel, uh, the top of the soft field dash and door cards that feature classy dark ash style inserts. Plus, there's smart piano black trimming on the console between the seats. Getting comfortable is easy, the seat's well proportioned, and here it features special shaping and 16-way adjustment, which has gained this driver's chair the coveted seal of approval from the AGR, Action for Healthy Backs organization. That feature alone might sell high mileage motorists into this car. We'll finish here by covering the cabin stowage options. Uh, we're disappointed that the glove box and the door bins are relatively small and there's nowhere to stow your sunglasses. Uh, on the plus side though, there is a usefully deep cubby behind the gear stick, uh, while in front of that lever is this smart sliding top compartment incorporating uh, a small shelf and two cup holders. Further back between the seats is an even deeper lidded storage box, inside of which is a useful USB port. Time to check out another area of this car that might really sell it to you, the back seat. And once inside, you really notice the benefit of this second generation model's extra 92 millimeters of wheelbase. As you'd expect from a car that's now nearly five meters in length, so nearly as long as an enormous Audi Q7 SUV, uh, there's plenty of room for one really tall adult to sit behind another. Headroom levels, well, they aren't quite so good, although to be fair, this Mark II Insignia model does pretty well in this regard, given that this uh, second generation model's roof height is 29 millimeters lower than before. Designer Mark Adams is six foot four inches tall, and he says he fits in here quite comfortably. Just as impressive is the cabin width, as you expect it might be, given this car is now wider than supposedly much bigger E-segment station wagon models like BMW's 5 Series Touring or Mercedes E-Class Estate. In theory, this ought to make it relatively easy for three adults to be comfortably seated back here. Now, unfortunately, mitigating against that is the height of this centre transmission tunnel and also the fact that the rear bench has been sculpted so that any uh, middle occupant has to position themselves on this uncomfortably raised section of foam. Uh, now, if there are only two of you, you'll be able to use this uh, centre armrest with its twin built-in cup holders, and top models like this one get these twin USB sockets and heat for the seats too. Now, despite the fact that this Insignia Sports Tourer has been pushed a little upmarket, prices have been kept very competitive. And indeed, they've been sharpened so that they more accurately fit the latest BIK benefiting kind categories. In fact, from launch, Vauxhall claimed that some versions of this Mark II model in Sneglia Sports Tourer were up to £1,500 less expensive than their direct first-generation predecessors. Uh, now, to be specific, we're talking about a range priced in the £19,000 to £35,000 bracket, and those are relatively affordable figures for a car of this size and they represent a £1,500 model for model premium over the hatch Grand Sport Insignia body shape. Uh, this sports tourer estate is also available in this raised SUV style country tourer guise if you want an alternative to an SUV. Let's take a look at a few specifics regarding the Sports Tour model lineup. Automatic transmission is an option across the range for around £1,700, and it's offered with six speeds if you have a 1.6 litre diesel, while the brand's latest eight speed auto box is available on all the other variants. At the foot of the lineup, most buyers are going to want to pay the premium of around £1,400 that Vauxhall asks to progress from the 1.5 litre turbo petrol units to the 1.6 litre turbo D diesels. It's the pokier of the two. 1.6 is the 136 PS 1.6 Turbo D unit that we think most buyers will want, and rightly so, because it probably represents the sweet spot in the range. 
You can find another £800 to get the 170 PS 2 litre turbo D power plant, but it costs a lot more to run and it's not much faster. Four wheel drive is available with that 2 litre turbo D engine, but only if you choose this country tourer body style. Otherwise, if you want all wheel traction in an Insignia, you'll need to be choosing either the top 210 PS 2 litre by turbo diesel variant or the 260 PS 2 litre turbo petrol model. Uh, with these two flagship derivatives, four wheel drive is conditional in both cases, as is auto transmission. The variants like those will push you over the £30,000 barrier, but by and large, the pricing of this Vauxhall is, as already suggested, very competitive. Something that will put into perspective by pointing out that an Insignia Sports Tourer is hardly any more expensive than a much smaller Vauxhall Astra Sports Tourer fitted out with the same engine. Um, a huge proportion of Insignia Sports Tourer models will be sold in the £19,000 to £23,000 bracket. Well, list pricing for key rivals like estate versions of the Ford Mondeo and the Skoda Superb uh, doesn't even start until the 21 to 22,000 pound price point and the money that you'll pay for the ritziest most powerful sports tourer models would only get you the cheapest feeblest and most basic versions of a BMW 3 Series Touring an Audi A4 Avant or a Mercedes C-Class estate. So you've got the idea, Vauxhall's asking figures here are going to leave volume competitors feeling quite uncomfortable, uh, never mind premium rivals. But let's get specific, if like most buyers you're looking at an entry level diesel, then list pricing suggests that this Vauxhall would uh, typically save you around £2,500 over estate versions of say the Ford Mondeo or the Skoda Superb. And even more if your point of reference is something like an estate version of the Volkswagen Passat, the Mazda or the Peugeot 508. Korean rivals get closer with comparable estate versions of the Hyundai i40 and the Kia Optima. Uh, the difference is more likely to be in the region of around £1,500. Only Toyota's Avensis Active Tourer estate can claim to be in any way comparably priced and that's a much older design with a smaller boot. You're wondering how Vauxhall's managed to achieve this kind of value pricing. Well, so will we. Uh, you want to know whether corners have been cut when it comes to standard specification, but if so, the issues aren't too obvious. Now, we were a bit surprised that the entry-level design trim level makes you pay extra for basics like parking sensors and driver's seat lumbar support, but otherwise, all the key features that you expect uh, appear to be provided. Tick off 17-inch alloy wheels, roof rails, auto headlights, lamps, keyless entry and the usual executive niceties like air conditioning, heated mirrors, uh, leather trimmed multifunction steering wheel and cruise control with a speed limiter. As for media connectivity, well as standard there is an IntelliLink infotainment system and that includes a seven speaker DAB audio setup and smartphone projection via either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. All of this works via a colour centre dash IntelliLink screen that is seven inches in size and base models and as you'd expect there's also the convenience of Bluetooth phone connectivity, a USB connection and an aux in socket. But that is just the start of the media cleverness. Also now standard on every insignia is the OnStar personal connectivity and service assistant package. Uh, once you've used OnStar, you'll really wonder how you ever managed without it. Uh, you'll never be stranded after a breakdown or an accident and almost anything that you might ever need to know about any journey that you'll ever take will be just a button press away. Uh, the OnStar package also allows you to create in your car a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot, plus there's a smartphone app that can remotely lock or unlock the doors, check your oil life, or if you've lost this Vauxhall in a busy car park, it can sound the horn or flash the lights. Plus, if your insignia is ever stolen, OnStar can disable it so it can't be started. In summary, no other rival has a system that can match the range of services that OnStar has to offer. Just bear in mind that there is a cost to use the 4G Wi-Fi after the first three months of ownership, and that'll vary depending on the service provider you use and the amount of data you want. And there is also a cost to continue with the whole OnStar system after year one, so expect a fee of around £90 a year, uh, excluding Wi-Fi. 
Is it worth going for a plusher trim level further up the range? Well, possibly. If you want to buy in above the base design trim level, there are two ways to go if you're searching for a mid-range sports tourer model. Uh, if you prioritize a sporty look and feel, there are SRI and SRI VX line nav models. If you're more interested in luxury though, you'll go uh, with either tech line nav or the elite nav variants that you'll need to get the most powerful two liter engines. Now you'll probably have worked out that the nav designation Nation denotes the standard fitment of satellite navigation. And that's a Navi 900 IntelliLink system, which comes with the larger 8-inch screen and which can affordably be added into design and SRI models if you want it. Most uh, potential insignia sports tourer buyers are probably going to settle on a mid-range model fitted out with either SRI or Techline trim. Uh, in both cases, extra features include twin-spoke 17-inch wheels, dual-zone climate control, auto wipers, uh, an auto-dimming rear-view mirror and twin rear USB sockets. Tech line trim further adds in front and rear parking sensors and tilt and lumbar adjustment for the driver's seat while also including a 4.2 inch color information display in the instrument binnacle. Um, alternatively, if the SRI package catches your eye, that'll be because of a more purposeful look courtesy of dark tinted rear windows, uh, front fog lights and a rear spoiler. Plus inside with this trim level, you get ambient LED lighting at the front, uh, sports pedals and sports front seats. Uh, the driver's one is approved by AGR who campaigned for healthier backs. Pricier SRI VX line nav trim adds to this tally with a full VXR body styling pack and a sportier VX line steering wheel. Plus at this level that 4.2 inch screen appears in the instrument cluster and you get larger 18 inch wheels providing you avoid the 1.6 litre diesel engine. Plush Elite Nav Trim comes with the sophisticated Intellilex LED Matrix headlights we've been trying here. Lamps able to constantly adjust their beam for maximum illumination that doesn't dazzle other road users. Another key Elite feature is full leather upholstery which is heated front and back. Plus, if you're graduating up from tech line trim, you also find that dark tinted windows and front fog lights make an appearance. Uh, the wheels on an Elite Nav Specified Sports Tourer model are are either 17, 18 or 20 inches in size, depending on the engine specified. That only leaves the flagship models. Uh, the super sporty GSI nav derivative gets 20 inch wheels, a special GSI body kit, a special sport chassis and the flex ride driving mode system with adjustable damping. Here though, we've chosen to test the SUV style country tourer variant, which features 20 millimeters of increased ground clearance, uh, revised bumpers with silver skid plate panels, extended wheel arches, housing special 18 inch alloy wheels and that flex ride driving mode system. Enough then on the standard spec, what about options? Well, given the longer distances that most insignias will travel, you're probably going to want to add in navigation, parking sensors and driver's seat lumber adjustment if the variant that you're looking at doesn't already have those things. Uh, beyond that, if you've avoided entry level trim, you'll be offered the chance to upgrade to a couple of key additions to this second generation model. Um, there's a head up display and the Entelelux LED matrix headlights, we mentioned earlier. Uh, keener drivers will want to look at the FlexRide adaptive chassis control system which offers continuous electronic damping control. Uh, other premium features available from mid-range spec upwards include a six channel seven speaker Bose sound system and you can now add in the full panoramic glass roof that previous Insignia sports tour models have never been able to offer. Uh, as for other options, well, you might want a rear view camera. Nav equipped models can be specified with a special 8 inch color instrument binnacle display. There's an optional wireless charger tray to more easily top up your mobile phone. And most bars will probably want one of the winter packs. Uh, these are there to provide heat for the windscreen, uh, the seats, and the steering wheel. Uh, heat for the front seats also comes included if you or your company can stretch to the optional brownstone Napa pre premium leather upholstery pack. Now that gives you super soft hide for the upholstery and an 18-way power adjustable AGR approved driver's seat with active ventilation and a massage function. Go on, you've earned it. 
Uh, you could add in a powered tailgate that can open with a wave of your foot below the bumper. Uh, plus, you could also specify a useful flex organizer pack, and that gives the cargo area side rails with hooks, a side net pocket, and a 3D storage net. Onto aesthetics, as you'd expect, there's a variety of 18 and 20 inch alloy wheels that you can upgrade to. Plus, if you avoid base trim and the base diesel engine, you can also consider a VXR styling pack, which adds a rear spoiler along with sporty bumpers and side sills. Now, we should also mention that unless you want this insignia to be finished in a solid Aegean blue color, you're going to have to pay extra for the paintwork. And now, this car features lava red brilliant paintwork, and there are various two coat metallic, um, pearlescent and premium shades and there's also a top tri-coat abalone white option. Talking of interior options, you can add Sienna perforated leather inserts into the seats or you could go for the optional VXR interior pack that will give the cabin a properly sporty feel. Enough on options, let's look at safety. Now, no car in this class can get by without standard, sophisticated camera-based safety systems these days. And sure enough, all insignias feature what Vauxhall calls its Driving Assistance Pack 1 package that works via a forward-facing camera, which is mounted behind the rearview mirror. Now, this uh, facilitates the brand's forward collision alert with automatic city emergency braking system. And that's an autonomous braking setup that works at low city speeds of up to 25 miles an hour uh, to scan the road ahead as you drive in search of vehicles that might represent a potential accident hazard. If one's detected, you'll be warned. Uh, now, if you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, the same camera also drives two further standard features, um, lane departure warning with lane assist, and that will alert you if you're drifting over lane markings and will imperceptibly steer you back into position and a following distance indicator will help you to maintain a safe gap to the vehicle in front. Plus, the navigation package also includes a traffic sign recognition system which pictures speed signs as you pass them and displays them on the dash. As for more common safety stuff, well, there's a pedestrian-friendly bonnet and all the usual inclusions, uh, things like tire pressure monitoring, uh, ice fix child seat fastenings and twin front side and curtain airbags, although no driver's knee bag. Uh, electronic safety features include an ABS system with brake assist and hydraulic brake assist fade to help in emergency stops and those are advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. There's also hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And the ESP stability control system includes cornering brake control, straight line stability control and a rollover mitigation system. Now that is a pretty comprehensive suite of safety equipment, but if you want to spend more, then there are three further options. Uh, go for what Vauxhall calls its Driving Assistance Pack 2, and you get a cruise control system which will use a radar to automatically keep your safe distance behind the car in front on the highway. Uh, if your insignia has an auto gearbox, then this setup will even bring the car to a stop and then automatically start it off again if you come across a traffic queue. Even more sophisticated are the Driving Assistance Pack 3 and Driving Assistance Pack 4 packages, and the brand makes those available on insignias fitted out with navigation. Uh, both include the same three key camera-driven features. Rear cross traffic alert, now that warns you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. Um, lane change assist with side blind spot alert, now that warns you if on the move uh, you're just about to dangerously pull out to overtake in front of another vehicle. And the advanced park assist system. Now that is there to help you to find a parking space and then automatically steer you into it. As for the difference between those final two packs, well, pack three gives you a 360 degree panoramic camera system, while with pack four, it's a simple rear view camera.
The designers really went the extra mile when it came to weight reduction with this second generation Insignia estate model. Uh, this Mark II model of Sports Tourer is up to 200 kilos lighter than the previous version. And to give you some perspective here, that's a reduction that's probably somewhere equivalent to the weight saving that you make if you asked your entire family to get out and walk. And it's particularly impressive when you consider that this second generation model is so much larger than its predecessor. From an efficiency point of view, this improvement was really needed to make up for the fact that relatively little is completely new beneath the bonnet, at least for diesel buyers anyway. All the black pump fueled engines are carried over from the previous generation model and that's why this Vauxhall can't emulate its Ford Mondeo estate rival in providing an entry level diesel variant which is able to dip below the 100 grams per kilometre of CO2 barrier. Still, the base 1.6 litre Turbo D model gets relatively close to that target. It manages 112 grams per kilometre of CO2 and 65.7 mpg on the combined cycle, which is pretty much as good as any other contender in this segment can manage. Go for that same 1.6 litre turbo D engine in its Pokia 136 PS guys and the figures are 119 grams per kilometre and 62.8 mpg. Readings you'll hit by about 10% if you take up the option of automatic transmission. Both these two diesel units feature Ecotech badging which basically means that the models in question come with ultra low rolling resistance tyres and an adaptive front grille shutter to reduce drag. All Insignia models also feature a stop-start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. That's not enough to keep the 170 PS 2-litre Turbo D diesel unit competitive despite its frugal-sounding blue injection badging. This variant can only manage 53.3 mpg on the combined cycle and 139 grams per kilometre of CO2, which is some way off the standards set by other 2-litre diesel engines in this segment. We think the 136 PS 1.6 litre turbo D unit is a far better bet. Earlier we mentioned the lack of fresh engine technology for diesel buyers. Now that's not the case when it comes to the petrol powered lineup. Here a freshly developed 1.5 litre unit provides a much more credible diesel alternative than the previous generation Insignia's 1.4 litre powertrain could deliver. In base 140 PS form it manages 47.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 136 grams per kilometre of CO2. Go for this unit in its Pokia 165 PS state of tune and it doesn't feature the Ecotech efficiency package we were talking about earlier, but that doesn't appear to make much difference. This derivative returns 46.3 mpg and 139 grams per kilometre of CO2. The only other petrol option is another all new engine, a 260 PS 2 litre turbo unit that only comes mated to four wheel drive and eight speed automatic transmission. Uh, the returns there are 32.5 mpg and 199 grams per kilometre of CO2. When it comes to questions of running cost efficiency, this Country Tourer Insignia model suffers a little in comparison both with its showroom stablemates and perhaps more significantly with other class rivals. To give you some perspective on that, uh, let's take the returns of an entry level two wheel drive version with 170 PS and manual transmission, 51.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 145 grams per kilometre. And that's easily bettered in this class by a four wheel drive Volkswagen sat all track with 190 PS and automatic transmission. Vauxhall really needs to try harder here. Let's cover off the other country tour and model figures so you've got them. Go for a two-wheel drive 170 PS Turbo D variant with automatic transmission and you're looking at 47.1 mpg on the combined cycle and 157 grams per kilometre. For the alternative four-wheel drive 170 PS Turbo D variant with manual transmission the stats read 43.5 mpg and 172 grams per kilometre. And finally the top 210 PS by Turbo 4x4 Auto version we're trying here here records 39.8 mpg and 188 grams per kilometer. It'll all make quite a difference if you're looking to possibly upgrade from a conventional sports tourer model into this country tourer variant. Uh, to give you an idea of just how much, let's tell you that an ordinary front-driven 2-litre Turbo D 170 PS diesel automatic sports tourer model has a CO2 reading of 150 grams per kilometre, which puts it into band H with a BIK rating of 32% and a first-year VED payment of £200. The 172 grams per kilometre CO2 reading 
applicable to a country tour model with the same engine but four-wheel drive and manual transmission means a band J classification where the benefit in kind rating of 36% and a first year VED payment of £800. On to maintenance issues. Uh, all engines share the same one year or 20,000 mile service intervals and you can download a provided My Vauxhall app onto your phone which sets up reminders about servicing and MOTs and helps you to find the most convenient garage to your location. If anything goes wrong that's not supposed to, uh, you're covered by a three year 60,000 mile warranty and that includes Vauxhall roadside assistance breakdown cover. Now this can be extended by up to two years and up to a maximum of 100,000 miles at extra cost. Other financial considerations include how much you'll pay for insurance. Uh, the Insignia range starts with the Group 14 ranking for every sports tourer fitted with the 140 PS 1.5 litre turbo petrol engine. If you'd rather have the more powerful 165 PS version of that motor, you'll be looking at premiums based on Group 16 or 17. Uh, that depends on the trim level you select. Uh, the potent 2 litre turbo 4x4 model sits at Group 25. Looking at the diesel options, the 110 PS 1.6 litre Turbo D Ecotec variant falls into group 13 or 14, depending on the trim level you prefer, while the 136 PS unit that most will want ranks at either group 15 or 16. Any sports tour or customer looking at the 2 litre Turbo Diesel will be paying their insurance based on either a group 20 or 21 rating. Lastly, we come to residual values, which are crucial in a sector which will see over 85% of sports store sales being made to company users. For the 136 PS 1.6 litre Turbo D variant, the most popular model, you're looking at being able to retain 35% of its original value after a typical three year 60,000 mile ownership period. Uh, that is better than an equivalent Mondeo estate can manage. So at least in that respect, the work that Vauxhall's put into making this Insignia estate a more premium product seems to be paying off. Uh, the other diesel models hang on to a similar slice of their original cost. Uh, while well, with the petrol versions, they come in at 34% for the 1.5 litre turbos and 32% for the 260 PS 2 litre 4x4. The estate cars task has never been a tougher one, with the sector of the market it once had to itself now swarming with SUV and MPV rivals. The solution, as employed by Vauxhall with this much improved second generation Insignia Sports Tourer, is to concentrate on sleek styling, a polished driving experience and a premium feel. As a result, you might well find this car to be a much more desirable product than you expected it would be. The issue is, of course, though, whether enough people will desire it over the numerous alternatives available to the family with this kind of money to spend. Uh, that's something that we certainly wondered at the start of this test, but then we took a closer look at the sums in question being required for ownership here. At the bottom of the range, uh, you're talking about the kind of figures which would otherwise buy you something like a plusher super mini based small SUV. And we know which one we'd rather have. Well, it certainly helps Vauxhall's cause that this second generation Insignia estate is one of the most improved cars we've recently tested, thanks to a whole raft of changes that have enhanced everything from styling to technology. In contrast to a previous model that inside really wasn't much bigger than an Astra sports tour from the next class down, this time around buyers get a spacious cockpit and one of the largest rear cabins in the segment, matched with standards of fit, finish and infotainment that are a really vast improvement over what was served up before. True, you do have to like road-going dynamics that are geared to more towards comfort than handling entertainment, and the efficiency figures delivered by the 2-litre diesel engines that many will want lag a little behind class leaders. Otherwise, though, there's very little not to like. In summary, what's on offer here is a genuine all-rounder that's comfortable and well-connected, with a decent carrying capacity, and which even delivers looks that can turn heads. It should make a sound choice.